In this video, I'm going to share my childhood memories of the 70s from TV and real life, some of which will probably utterly shock anyone who wasn't around back then. So stay tuned to either be traumatized or just have fun remembering the crazy good old days. Everybody had basically four channels to watch. There was the th big three networks. That was ABC, CBS, and NBC. And then there was PBS for moments of utter desperation. Now, I remember before I was even old enough to go to school, waking up on a typical day to watch Sesame Street and the Electric Company. Now, some days, though, PBS wouldn't come in, and I would have to go outside. That's outside. And use what little strength I had at that age to twist the antenna that was on a pole in the ground right next to my parents single wide trailer now back then those things were basically matchboxes the trailers that is on wheels forget getting knocked down by a tornado a good gust of wind and it would be flattened so if I managed to get the antenna in the right place or a good gust of wind helped get the antenna in the right spot I got to watch PBS educational programming Hi, ho, Kermit the Frog here, and beside me is a telephone. Now, no who boy, can describe right? a telephone? Exciting. I wouldn't let a kid watch today's version of that for nothing. I mean, you're liable to end up with a pink hair, blue polka dotted kid with identity issues. But back then, it was just numbers and letters. But what do I know? I wasn't even in kindergarten yet. All I knew was that Cookie Monster was funny and Big Bird was really neat. I wonder if Cookie Monster is partly responsible for the obesity epidemic. <sighs> I think the only thing I really liked about the electric company, for real, was Spider-Man. It was Spider-Man's first live-action appearance in anything. And did you know that Morgan Freeman, the actor, was on the electric company? Because I didn't know him from Adam back then. After those shows went off in the morning, PBS got so boring, even I couldn't watch it as a kid. I don't remember what came on next, but I'm sure if it was about, like, watching paint dryer golf which for a kid is about like the most boring thing you could watch now, I do remember game shows being on till like noon or so and then soap operas the only game show that really sticks in my mind though is The Price is Right with Bob Barker but that show has been on my entire life and we watched it regularly for years I don't think I've watched it since the 80s though I'm not even going to talk about the soap operas that ran from like noonish to four that was really hard for a kid, but my mom loved those soap operas, and I had to sit there. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Now at 4 o'clock, finally something good would come on. And that was the time for reruns of something like Gilligan's Island or the Adam West Batman show. Of course, my, my dad had to watch Walter Cronkite every night on the news if he was uh, home from work, that is. And that's the way it was. And then, prime time, I could go on forever about that. So many TV shows in the 70s. I have to do another video, but for primarily it was the Six Million Dollar Man. I remember, and in Emergency, and then of course the shows my mom made me watching that, like Little House in the Prairie and Waltons. You know all that kind of crap. Before the decade was over, there were a lot of shows I liked to watch that I need to do videos of in the future, like Charlie's Angels, Good Time, Sanford and Son, and of course the Incredible Hulk, which I do have some videos already that you might be interested in. You should definitely check that out if you're a Hulk fan. Of course, Saturday morning cartoons deserve a video of their own, but I don't have time for it today. I would wake up 6.30 in the morning to watch reruns of Casper the Friendly Ghost. But I must have been nuts to wake up that early on Saturday for Casper reruns, as much as I still like Casper. But then, y you got most of your cartoons on Saturday. That was it. That was the only chance you got, except for, uh, you know, if you're lucky, they might be a cartoon special in prime time, like Peanuts, you know, with Snoopy and Charlie Brown. And that was if your parents didn't want to watch something else. After all, we only had the one TV. Now, Thursdays was payday, and I remember my mom taking me uh, to eat out at such wonderfully healthy spots like Kentucky Fried Chicken and Dairy Queen. I think their food tasted better back then, but even so, it took me years to figure out the reason I got the shakes after every KFC meal was probably the huge amount of grease they put into the food. It's probably a good thing I got in health and fitness, or my arteries would be so clogged now my blood would look like 10W40 oil. But sometimes I do miss the taste of Dairy Queen's ice cream and onion rings. Boy, they tasted so good back then, and there was nothing in the world like a cold Coke on a hot summer day in a glass bottle. I seriously think they must have watered sodas down by the 80s, because I never got that same taste 
that I had as a small child for Cokes. And that's another thing I gave up for health, by the way. But for decades, I drank sodas like water, and water was what you drank only after playing in the hot sun to the point, you know, where you're about to die from thirst. The other thing I remember about payday back in the early 70s uh, was I usually got a toy, which uh, most of the time was something like bubbles or toys with magnets, a squirt gun, uh, maybe a cap gun, or one of those cheap paper airplanes, you know, that break as soon as you hit a wall. Yeah, they had those little rubber band operated propellers, and the wings would snap in about two hours or less of playtime, no matter how careful you were. I think the biggest thing I got back then was a shiny red tricycle for one of my birthdays. Now here's where I get to uh, some things that probably are really shocking to people, especially anybody who wasn't born in the 70s. Now I remember the 70s were really filthy. I mean, litter was everywhere. I mean, especially compared to today. Driving down the road, people would, wouldn't think twice to throw out what was left of their fast food meals in the containers all over the road. But besides that, there were also ashtrays everywhere. I mean, everybody smoked. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. I think almost every adult human on the planet must have smoked back then, especially in the South. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I seem to remember that people would literally throw their cigarettes down on the floor in a store and then squish them with their foot and just leave them for the store workers to come by and sweep it up. Well, if you did that today, the police would come and haul you off to jail. And then there were those old soda can lid tops back then that you could tear off the can and, and usually uh, people would just throw them on the ground. I mean, the neat thing was you could collect them and turn them into a chain. Hey, there was, there was not a lot of toys for kids back then there, especially us poor kids. So anything that could be turned into a toy, we welcomed. Now here's the funny thing, even though there was trash everywhere, it was easier to find a dumpster than it is today. Today they have like this electrified fence around the dumpsters to keep you from getting in to throw away your trash. And they have this dude to guard the place. Well right then, you know, they had dumpsters everywhere. Of course the only problem with, was is that people would throw their trash at the dumpster and miss it. And it would get really smelly and you needed like a hazmat suit to get to the dumpster to actually get your garbage into it. But you could find money all over the place. I'm talking cash money. I mean, sometimes at least, and always some change lying around on the ground. I guess people just don't carry money around anymore. It's always credit cards, so they just don't drop it as much as they used to. I don't know, but I used to, for a poor kid, I used to be kind of rich at times. I mean, you never know when you might find that $5 bill laying here or a $20 bill there. And money went a lot farther back then than it does now. Now, here's a story for you. The mo It'll probably shock a lot of people. Are you ready? The way I got into collecting comics was I was a little older then. I think I was actually in kindergarten at the, at the time. I went to my grandma's house, and uh, as soon as we pulled in to her, uh, right next to her yard, uh, she had the, these trash cans out, and inside the trash cans were all these comic books. I mean, like Walt Disney and Looney Tunes and Superman, Super Friends, all kinds of stuff. Some of them didn't have covers on them, but you know, that was the first time I ever saw a comic book. And after that, well, I pulled them out of the trash, of course. Uh, which is the shocking part because you can imagine somebody pulling stuff out of the trash now or letting a kid do it but hey you know it was free and uh, so I started collecting comic books ever since then not only do I still collect comic books today I've even written and drawn some that I have on sale on Amazon including K-Man Comics, Key Monster Man, The Subliminals, and I've written a sci-fi novel series called The Time Cruisers It's based off of a superhero storyline I created a year or so before. In fact, today I'm working on a brand new superhero called Liberty Ace. Hey, somebody has got to put the truth, justice, and the American way back into comics. Uh, not to mention the fun action and adventure too. So please subscribe and support our channel by hitting the like button and commenting if you like this video. And please hit the bell so you'll get future notifications when we make a new video. This channel is all about classic pop culture, cartoons, comic books, and just remembering the fun stuff alive. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.